my students, in the previous sessions, we have discussed about the synopsis or the highlighting points relating to the chemical bonding and its molecular structure. Okay, so that is we have discussed what chemical bond is and what are the various different types of chemical bonds and what the various theories has explained for the geometry of usually the covalent molecules because that depends upon the nature of hybridization okay so based on the nature of hybridization we have decided what is the geometry of that particular covalent compounds maybe a non ionic or maybe sometimes some organic compounds also we can have the geometry of that one which is strictly based on the nature of hybridization so that hybridization concept has been categorized for the two different theories but as vpt and then VSCTR. Okay. Now, in this particular session, we will move on to the solving of some of the multiple choice questions related to this chemical bonding and the molecular structure. So, let us start the first one. First one is when sodium and the chlorine make to react, so reacts, then energy is a dash for. Means release and ionic bond is formed, release and covalent bond is formed, ionic bond is formed, and then absorbed along with covalent bond is formed. Now, as we mentioned that Na plus Cl gives rise to NaCl to balance that we are having to NaCl, for example. Sodium chloride, we know that it is the best example for it. Which one? Ion means first we are having the ionic bond is formed, and now as it is a bond breaking or bond making, usually there is a bond making between the sodium and the chlorine in the form of sodium ion and then the chlorine ion. Therefore, bond breaking is endothermic, whereas bond making is exothermic. Exothermic means release of energy, whereas endothermic means absorption of energy. As it is a Bond making first, there is a release of energy and then there is a formation of which bond here, it is the ionic bond. Hence, the option we have to choose for this one is when sodium and chlorine reacts, then energy is first released and then which bond is formed actually? The ionic bond is formed. Okay, next. Second one. The electronic configurations of the four different elements, what are those? L, P, Q, and R are given in the brackets. They are the various electronic configurations for the four different elements. Now, the formula of the ionic compound that has been formed between these two elements are. So, what we can expect between these? So, here, as if I mentioned, 1R, 2R, 3 valence electrons means. The given element as what? 1 or 2 or 3 valence electrons means they lose the electrons in forming plus 1 R plus 2 R plus 3 depending upon the number of electrons that has been lost. Suppose if it contains 7 R, 6 R, rare cases of 5. Here they are the sum gaining of electrons. Gaining of one electrons. Gaining of electrons leads to minus 7 becomes 8 by gaining 1 electrons minus 1 of charge minus 2 and here it is minus 3. Means just you have to search how many valence electrons have been present. If the valence electrons are 1 or 2 or 3, we can expect it is in the form of catalytic nature. If it is 7 or 6 or 5, then we are expecting the form of ionic nature. In this, L has L has 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Means immediately we can decide that first. L is having, as it is having a 6 valence electrons means, 6 means it has to get 2 electrons. Therefore, L becomes what? Minus 2. How we are getting minus 2 here? As the valence electrons with respect to L is only 6, it has to gain the electron, therefore we can expect it is minus 2. Let us take Q now. Q. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. 3s2, 3p5 means totally how many valence electrons are there? This is 7. If it is 7, what we can decide? 
it is the minus one. Means the Q is having an oxidation state and the charge of minus one. Let us say the P now. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. 3s1 means only 1 valence electrons. If it is having only 1 valence electrons, it will lose that electron to get plus 1 charge. Therefore, the charge with respect to phosphorus, sorry, P is plus 1. And R is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. 3s2 means 2 valence electrons. If it is having a 2 valence electrons, it means it is plus 2. Therefore, R becomes plus 2. So, for that we have to very much clear. Number of valence electrons, this is the charge in that. If it contains 1, 2 or 3, we can expect plus 1, plus 2 and plus 3. If it is 7 or 6 or 5, then we can expect it is minus 1, minus 2 or it will be the minus 3. So after knowing this, as ionic compounds are neutral in nature, even though they are going to be the charge pages, ionic compounds contain the charges, no doubt. But the total positive charges must always be equal to total negative charges. That is why we can expect it is the neutral in nature. Therefore, can I expect it is P plus 1 and Q minus 1 is the first, it is equal to 0 now. That's one option. Then R2 plus and L2 minus, we can have the second one, R2 plus and then L2 minus. This is neutral. Suppose if it is P plus and instead of Q minus, let us take 2 minus. Next, another thing is if it is R plus and then, sorry, R2 plus. R2 plus and another is Q minus. Here the sum of the charges is not equal to 0, but we can make that 0 by multiplying the suitable number. Here is plus 1, here it is minus 2, means it is 2 of that. Here it is plus 2, here it is minus 2, means it is 2 of that. Therefore, in every case, it is going to be the 0. Means I multiplied this by 2, here it is multiplied by 2. Therefore, what are the products here? 1 is PQ. This is PQ. Here it is R. Here it is P2L. Here it is RQ. So those are the options here. PQRL. PQRL is there. Next. L2P. Then this first one is not possible here. Second one is a P is not also possible here. It is P2L is there here. Then RQ. Therefore, the option with respect to this one is the C. So this is how we are going to frame the Ionic compounds such that the sum of the positive charges on all the cations must be equal to number of positive negative charges on all the ions. And that is decided by the number of what electrons here? Valence electrons related to the given ion. Okay? So let's have the next one. Lattice energy of an ionic compound depends upon lattice energy. What is lattice energy we have discussed? It is the Amount of energy released when? How much? The one mole of a substance, preferably the ionic compound, is formed from its gaseous constituent ions. So here, for example, AB is one ionic substance. It is formed from which atoms? A plus and then B minus. And this is gaseous, this is also gaseous. So here, no doubt it is an example for what compound here? Ionic compound. So amount of energy released depends upon the first the charge of that particular ions, one thing. And then ionic bond we have mentioned that it is having a larger cationic size with the smaller anionic size lead to the formation of which one ionic bond. Means it also depends upon the size. Means not only the charge with respect to the ion, but also the size of this one, and that gives the delta H of which one? Lattice. That is lattice enthalpy or lattice energy. Means lattice energy of any ionic compound always depends upon the what? The cost, the charge that has been present on the individual ions, along with the size of that particular ion. So usually we have mentioned that size means here it is cadenic size and anionic size. Larger cadenic size with the smaller which one? Ionic sense is the favorable condition for the formation of each compound only. Ionic compound are to be the ionic bonds. So here, as with respect to this case, it is the charge along the which one? Size. Therefore, we can expect it is the D option. Okay? <clears throat> Many ionic crystals always dissolve in water. Majority of crystals. Why? Water is an amphibrotic or amphibrotic solvent. No doubt it is an example for amphibrotic protein substance. Water is highly boiling, it is having a highly boiling point. The process is accompanied by the positive heat of solution. 
Water decreases the inter-ionic attraction in the crystal and is a to the one page. So here, as if the dissolution of which in a which, the ionic compound in a suitable solvent, preferably the polar solvent. For example, AB, if I mention any ionic compound in the solid state, when it is added in which one? Water. What water is a polar solvent? Here it forms A plus of aqueous plus B minus of aqueous. This is called as a delta H of which one? Hydrate. Here, the solvent, which is that solvent here? It is the polar solvent. The negative charge of this one, sorry, the negative charge of oxygen is going towards this and positive charge of this and such that there is a breakage of this one. And this is called as Dielectric constant. What is dielectric constant? It is the capacity of a polar solvent. Capacity of simply the one polar solvent to decrease the electrostatic force of attraction between the which one? Oppositely charged ions. Means higher the polarity of the given solvent, more is the dielectric constant. And hence, more is the solubility with respect to the given solvent. As it is particularly the water, it is called as hydration. If it is any non-polar solvent, it is called as generally the salt. Therefore, many ionic crystals usually they are soluble in water. Why? Because the both options. What is that? What the water or the polar solvent will do here? It decreases the which one? Inter-ionic force. Inter-ionic force is also called as electrostatic force of attraction. Between the which one? Oppositely charged ions present in the crystal lattice due to the process called as Hydration are generally is expressed as salts. Okay, so therefore the option is going to be the B. Chemical formula for calcium pyrophosphate is a Ca2P2O7. Therefore, what is the formula of the ferric pyrophosphate? This is very important, or this makes easier if and only if. We have to know the charges on all the cations and all the anions that we have discussed earlier. Okay? So here, as if the calcium pyrophosphate formula is given, what is that? Ca, Ca2, P2O7. Here, the formula of which we are right, the ferric pyrophosphate. So here, this is the no element of oxidation state. We know that all alkali metals will have the plus one as their oxidation state, and all alkali earth metals will have the plus two as its oxidation state. As calcium is an alkali earth metal, it is plus two. If it is plus two, it's plus two into two is becoming plus four totally. To neutralize that, the charge must be equal to zero, means we should have minus one. Means this is the formula for which one? Pyrophosphate. Pyrophosphate. That is what is called as calcium pyrophosphate. Now, iron in the ferrous and ferric, ferric. Plus 2 is ferrous and plus 3 is called as ferric. Therefore, it is plus 3. If this is plus 3, pyrophosphate is P2 over 7, how much? 4 minus. What happens when I sum these two? It is not equal to 0, it is minus 1. How to make this 0? This has to be multiplied by 4 and this has to be multiplied by 3. Therefore, plus 3 into 2 is plus 12. Here, minus 4 into 3 is equal to minus 2. Therefore, the sum is equal to 0. Therefore, the formula for the ferric phosphate is Fe4, P2, O7 with how many times? Yes. The option with respect to this is only the C. Means, if and only if, know the oxidation state or the charge on the alkali earth metal that is called as calcium I have detected the charge or oxidation state of which one? Ferric phosphate. And also by knowing the ferric plus 3 as its oxidation and finally upon the net charge making 0 by multiplying the suitable integers we are getting the final formula for ferric phosphate is going to be done Fe4P2O7 with how much? Price. Okay. Next, favorable conditions for electrovalency are 
Där satt alla jag, där skärde jag en nöts annat. Jag lade två med en sista nivåt. Och det är två med en sista. It is the number of electrons that has been lost or been by an element to form either the cation or it may be the and these two involved in the formation of which one ionic bond and that ionic bond is also called as electrovalent bond. Number of electrons that has been shared in forming the covalent bond is called as covalent. Number of electrons are lost as well as gained in forming the respective cation and anion is called as what valency first? Electrovalency and that involved in the formation of which one? Electrovalent bond. Electrovalent bond is also called as ion. Okay. Now, so you see, what are the various conditions we have discussed here? It should have the charge. It should have the size of the cation. And we should have the size of the When we are discussing the conditions with respect to the formation of an electron, we should have the large cationic size and the smaller which one anionic size. As the charge becomes more and more, it leads to the covalent character. Therefore, we should have the low charge. So means the lower charge along with the larger bond size, cationic size, and then the smaller anionic size makes the which one here? Ionic bond. Ionic bond is also called as which one? The Electrovalent bond. So here it is having the first what charge? Low charge. Low charge along with that is the size of cation. Means it is the larger size of the cation and then the smaller size of which one? Ah, therefore, the option with respect to this is means the favorable conditions for the electrovalency are what? Low charge of the given ions, then larger what ion? Cation and the smaller which one? The ion. The number of electrons that has been involved in the formation of nitrogen molecule is how much? This is a direct question. If we know the electronic configuration directly, R. N plus N gives rise to what? N. Nitrogen is the molecule. As if in the previous I discussed how to write the valence electrons with respect to the Second period electrons. Nitrogen atomic number is 7, means how many valence electrons are there? It is actually 5. Therefore, it is 5 valence electrons. Similarly, here. Individually, they are unstable, but after sharing, how much we have to share here? 3 electrons each. Means we are having 3 SEPs to get a what structure? Three shared electron pair means total how many electrons are there? One electron pair means two. Therefore, three shared electrons pair means this. So that is why nitrogen is having a triple bond. That is why it is a more stable molecule. Why? Because its bond order is triple. Okay. Next. Which compound is highest covalent in nature? Which compound is what? Highest covalent in nature. We know that. Largest covalent in nature. So here, if the difference in electronegativity is equal or greater than 1 point 8, then it is a formation of which bond? I if it is less than 1 point 8, it is the formation of which bond? Covalent. Again, Higher the difference, more is the covalent character. Lesser the difference, lesser is the covalent character. And this almost leads to non-polar nature. This leads to the polar nature. Means we are having the higher covalent. What is the meaning of higher covalent? Means it is the highest of the which one? Polarity. If the highest is the polarity, means more is the difference in which one? Electronegative. So I think the common element with respect to this is lithium. Chlorine, bromine, fluorine, and then iodine. It 
is delta plus, here is delta minus, delta minus, delta minus, and then delta plus. Can you say that this is the more electronegative here? And this is the least electronegative. Iodine is the least electronegative, and gold is the what? More electronegative. On that basis, we can decide that. Where we can explain the difference in electronegative is maximum or more? I think it is this one. Because more electronegativity difference is found to be the highest co-radic character. More the difference in electronegativity, more is the co-radic character. Ah, here mentioned the highest coherent nature. Highest coherent nature leads to the lesser electronegativity. Therefore, it is higher the difference in electronegativity, more is the ionic character. Lesser the difference means it is more is the what character? Coherent character. On that basis, this is having the highest what character? Coherent character. And this is having the highest ionic character. Highest ionic character is indirectly called as lowest, which is one. Highest coherent character and indirectly it is the lesser of the rich character, ionic character. Therefore, the coxal difference between that one is going to be the lithium iodide is going to have the highest coherent in nature. Okay? Next, with which of the following given pairs carbon dioxide resembles? With respect to what we can decide, the carbon dioxide is having the same number of pairs as that of the rest of the two pairs. Carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is linear, which undergo sp hybridization. It's a very carbon dioxide is a sp hybridization with a bond angle of 180. 180 means it is going to be the Leave. So let us have mercury first. Mercury, zinc, cadmium, and mercury belongs to the last group of the which one? The D block groups. You know that zinc, cadmium, mercury will have the valence electrons are how much? Only two because it is Ns2 with the N minus one D then. On that basis, the number of valence electrons with respect to that is half of. 2 plus chlorine is 2. That's equal to 2. 2 means again it is this. Low valence are the zero. Why? Because it is low valence combined. H minus BPs. H is 2. BPs are also 2. Therefore it is equal to 0. Means same here. C to H2. We know that it is having a triple bond of this one. It always undergoes what hybridization? Is the hybridization. So let us have that. The first case is correct about the HGCl2 then. So we have having the not resemblance. So these two both will have the HGCl2 will have the same. In case of SNCl2, let us take H is equal to half of. Tin belongs to the carbon family. Carbon silicon, tin we are saying. So if it is tin means carbon means it is having a 4 valence electrons. SNCl4 means it is 4. Four refers to SP. Therefore, it is not an example for a wash SP hybridization, that is why it is going to be the one. So, as usual, this is also the same, and then which is having a similar resemblance with respect to the similar resemblance is going to There is similar resemblance. Similar resemblance is directly this one because both are not hybridized SP. But here it is. SP3 hybrids. Let us have this. This is SP2, but sorry, SP and NO2. N means 5 plus no, this one it is NO2. Therefore, that doesn't have the same hybridization. So, here also N, no, N is equal to 2, N is equal to 5, is, N is equal to 5. Here, it comes up 5, but we can't expect the one hybridization. SP2 hybrid, SP hybridization. This is possible in case of only the which one. HG is CL2 along with which one? C2H2, that is called as E9. Okay, next. Next is <coughs> the coal compound HCl has some ionic character. Why? The electronegativity of hydrogen is greater than that of chlorine. That is immediately ruled out. Why? Because chlorine is always, or all halogens are more electronegative than each one. Therefore, the first is wrong. The electronegativity of the hydrogen is equal to that of chlorine. It is never. The electronegativity of this one is not equal to this. But the third option may be right. Why? Because the electronegativity of the chlorine is
which order is greater than which, which one? The hydrogen. Therefore, H C L delta minus delta. So what I chose here is this. Hydrogen and chlorine are gases, of course. These are gases, but that doesn't decide the which character, the polar character, the polar most probable option is the electronegativity of which is always greater than which the chlorine is always greater than that of which one? The Which of the following statements regarding the covalent bond is not true? Which of the following is going to be the not true with respect to the which bond? Covalent bond. The electrons are shared between the two atoms. Covalent bonds are always obtained by the sharing of the which one? Electrons. The first one is right. The bond is going to be the non directional bond. In the VPT, we have explained. The geometry of any covalent molecule always depends upon the nature of the hybridization because the covalent bond is always that. Therefore, ionic bond is not direction, but covalent bonds are always direction. Therefore, we can expect the exact geometry of that particular covalent bond. The strength of the bond depends upon the extent of overlapping. Yes, it is right. According to VPT, the bond formed may or may not be polar. Means either it may be polar or it may be the non polar. Therefore, the not a true statement with respect to covalent bond is the covalent bond is not directional, is not correct, it is only the one direction. Okay. Which of the following compounds doesn't follow the octet rule here for the electronic display uh, distribution? Phosphorus. Phosphorus, we know that it is a nitrogen family. Nitrogen family means polyvalence electrons. Chlorine means as usual. Sharing of electron, sharing of electron, sharing of electron, sharing of electrons. It becomes an object. If it is PCL5, 5 valence electrons. How many chlorine we are having? As for the same, each has a share of the one. Means it is having a 10 valence electrons on it. This is not violating, it is a violation of the which one? This is not applicable according to the virtual given is the object. Oxygen is possible. Why? Oxygen is 6. Hydrogen is 1. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. Again, it is which one? Object. PH3 is similar to that of which one? The PCL. Therefore, all are possible, but not the which one. Because it is electron rich species, which is not applicable for the which one? Is that? Okay. So the rest are the next. We will discuss in the uh, multiple choice questions in the next class. Okay. Thank you. Welcome, students. Now we move to the question number 30. Which species has the maximum number of low pair of electrons on the central atom? Which has the low, maximum number of which one low pair of electrons on the central atom? Okay. So for that we have to discuss about the H and then L piece. H is equal to first half of which the key atom is the chlorine. Chlorine means halogen, halogen means sir. No monovalent atoms, no cation, but the charge of this one is amp. Therefore, it is equal to 4. 4 equals to which one? This Then L piece is equal to H minus B. What is H here? It is 4. Minus, how many bond lengths are there? Three monovalent or bivalent or trivalent or only equivalent here are equal to equal to one. Means how many bond lengths are there? One. It's going to be XCF4. XC means a no gas. No gas equals two. Eight valence electrons. Half of eight. How many monovalent fluorine atoms are there? Four. Zero and zero. That's equal to six. Six equals two. SP3D. SP3D2 means it is taken off. Sorry, after that, sir. LP is equal to 6 minus. How many bond pairs are there? 4 fluorine means it is equal to. Let's have the third. SF4. Half of. Sulfur means oxygen family. Oxygen means it is 6. How many monovalent are there? Here it is 4. No charge of cation and anion. Therefore, it is equal to 5. 5 means it is 
sp3. Let's see, lp is equal to what? h minus b. How many bps are there? It is 4. 4. That is equal to 1. Let's have a last one. Bp. h is equal to half of. The central atom itself is iodine. Iodine means halogen. Halogen means 7. How many monovalent are there? Iodine means monovalent. Therefore, it is 2 out there. And our charge on this one is going to be the 1. That is equal to 5. 5 means again it is sp3. Lp is equal to 5 minus. If I is a central atom, another two are the monovalent atoms, therefore it is equal to 2, that is equal to 3. Therefore, according to that, the maximum number of lone pairs is going to be in the. Because the first and third, that is chloride ion and then the sulfur tetrafluoride will have lone pair of electrons of 1. Whereas xenon tetrafluoride has a valence electrons of how much? 2. Whereas the last one that is called as I3 minus is having the. Number of low pairs is going to be the what? The 3. Okay. Next. The number of debut bonds present in the sulfuric acid molecule is how much? Debut bonds is also called as which one? The debut bond is also called as what? It is a quadrant. Okay. So here H2SO4 means the central atom is a sulfur. Sulfur first. Sulfur is a family of which one? Oxygen. Oxygen has how many valence electrons? Or sulfur has how many valence electrons? Six. Six. Okay. How many oxygens are there we are having? Six. Then four options first. Each option has six valence electrons. Six. Six. Here it is. Six. Here we have to mention six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Next, in addition to that, we are having two hydrogens. Let's put here hydrogen. H uh, H. So no doubt this is a covalent bond. This is a covalent bond. Okay. Now we get side side. About the oxygen. It is octet. It is octet. It is octet, and this is also octet. Let's come to the key atom. That is called a sulfur. This is shared electron pair 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4. That's equal to totally 12 valence electrons are there. It is highly unstable because it is not a main which one? Octet structure. So for that, this has been shifted to here. Means this is purely from which one? The sub. Again, this has been shifted to here. Such that this is purely from sulfur. This is ordinary covalent bond, this is ordinary covalent bond. But this is also covalent bond, but the shared electron when it is contributed by both atoms means it is quadrant. Similarly, quadrant. Usually, first we mention that in the form of a double bond. Apart from that, what you have to mention, it is a which bond here? It is a coordinate bond. Therefore, we can expect how many coordinate bonds has existed in this one. It is the two. Okay? Sulfur is coordinately bonded with the two oxygen atoms and the two covalently bonded, and then those two oxygens are covalently bonded with two hydrogens with the basicity is equal to two. Basicity of H2SO4 is equal to what? Two, because it contains which and which ions? H plus and then O minus. H plus and then O minus. Okay? So that is the number of daily bonds in the sulfuric acid molecule is just only how much? Is that? Next, <clears throat> in the following, which one have the zero dipole moment? As if we are discussing about the quark and then the non quark. Dipole moment of the symmetrical molecule is always equal to mu is equal to zero for symmetrical molecules, mu not equal to zero for unsymmetrical molecules. 
that is the thing which is most important. When you upload in CSP to a high scale organization like this, this one, CCL4. Again, the coordinate point means it is a dipole moment is towards the more electron unit that is called as chlorine. Similarly, boron trichloride. So here, as all the three molecules are going to be what in nature? Symmetrical nature. This is sp3 hybridized. This is sp hybridized. This is sp2 hybridized. Without the lower pair of electrons, makes that molecule to be what? Symmetrical. For a symmetrical molecule, the dipole moment of that one is always equal to what? See, the option with respect to this one is small of this. Because all molecules will have a what structure? Symmetrical structure of the hybridization like sp for BCL2, sp3 for CCL4, and then sp2 for this one boron. Next, <clears throat> which of the following which shows the least dipole character? Dipole character. Which will have the least dipole character? Water, ethanol, ethane, and then ether. Water. It's having a V shape. Ethanol. Then ethane. Then ether, CH3, OCH3 are generally R and R also. R and R. So here this is electronegative and these two are electropositive. This is electropositive, this is electronegative, that is always. These are hydrocarbons. Usually the hydrocarbons are the best example with respect to non-polar. If the non-polar is okay, the view is going to be the minimum. Minimum dipole character is absolutely against this. So here it is delta minus and here it is delta. Therefore, this is having the, the exact which point. The dipole character. Therefore, the minimum dipole character is absolutely in case of a stick to the hydrocarbon and that hydrocarbon is going to be the one. In the maximum dipole moment for the triatomic molecule that is called as XYZ. Again, we have mentioned what is the bond angle to get the maximum and then the minimum. As if we know that the dipole moment is given by root of X square plus Y square plus. 2xy into cos of theta. This is the formula for the calculation of which one? The dipole moment, suppose if it is inclined at an angle of this. This is the case. And theta is the what angle? Bond angle between those two dipoles. So this is also dipole. This is also dipole. Between two dipoles, inclined at an angle of theta, then what should be that? The dipole moment when is going to be the so here as you mentioned, if theta is 90 degree, cos theta is 0, cos theta is 0 means this mu is going to be the maximum. Because it is just only the what square and what square is x square plus y square. Suppose if it is 180, means above 90 to 180, the value of cos theta goes on decreasing, means we are getting the negative value for it. Cos greater than 90 is going to be the negative. Therefore, as it is negative, means that the difference of those two becomes less. Therefore, it is going to be the means for a dipole moment character which is inclined at a bond angle of how much? Theta. The maximum dipole moment is observed if the bond angle is expected to how much? The 90 degree and the minimum dipole moment is observed in case of the bond angle of how much? 100. 100, that is at theta is equal to 100. Next, the dipole moment 
of which molecule? Hydrogen bromide. The vapor when the is hydrogen bromide is 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 30 centimeter and the interatomic spacing is found to be how much? 1 angstrom. Therefore, what is the percentage of that particular ionic character? What is the percentage of ionic character with respect to that HBr molecule whose dipole moment is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 30 in terms of centimeter and the interatomic space or the interionic space in case of the HPR molecule is going to be 1 angstrom, then what is the percentage of this one? Ionic character. So here, I have mentioned the 3 or 4 different formulas to get the value of which one? Percentage of which character? Ionic character. Percentage of ionic character is given by the dipole moment that has been absorbed into Q into E or Q into D, charge into charge of an electron into D, into and this is a formula for the calculation of percentage of ionic character which is having a definite which moment, right. So here the dipole moment of ion is going to be 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 30 in terms of centimeter gas expressed. E is the charge of that, what is the charge of an electron? 1.60 of 10 to the power of minus 19 in terms of coulombs. And the distance is going to be the interatomic space is called as 1 angstrom. 1 angstrom is 10 to the power of minus 10 meter or 10 to the power of minus 8 in terms of centimeter. Minus 8 in terms of centimeter. Into if I want the percentage which it is. So what happens when I simplify that particular? So here 1.6, 1.6 gets cancelled here. Minus 28 actually. This is minus 27. If I simplify that, it becomes means if which is given, the dipole moment of the substance is given along with the interatomic space is given as how much angstrom? One angstrom. Then the percentage of ionic character is given by the formula dipole moment is charge into the distance into percentage which it is one. And on simplification, I am getting how much percent here? It is a Next. In a mixed molecule, polar molecule, the ionic charge is going to be what? 4.8 into 10 to the power of minus 80. If the interionic distance is 1 angstrom, then what is the dipole moment? The same dipole moment. Previously, the dipole moment is given, just we have calculated the percentage of its character. Any time. So here we have just mentioned how to calculate the dipole moment. It is nothing but the charge into distance. Charge into the distance. But the ionic charge has mentioned it is 4.8 into 10 to the power of minus 8 in terms of what? Yes, electrostatic unit. And what is the interionic distance? It is 1 angstrom. What is the meaning of 1 angstrom here? 10 to the power of minus 10 meter or 10 to the power of minus 8 in terms of centimeter. That is equal to 4.8 into 10 to the power of minus 80 ESU centimeter. ESU centimeter. It is equal to 4.8 in terms of delay because 10 to the power of minus 18 electrostatic unit the centimeter is called as 1 delay. Hence the final answer is going to be what? 4.8 in terms of delay. Okay? That is just the product of which in the part? Charge into the distance. Charge is equal as 4.8 into 10 to the power of minus 10 in terms of electrostatic units. And the interionic distance is going to be the 1 angstrom. Here we have connected to 10 to the power of minus 8 in terms of centimeter. On simplification, I am getting the 4.8 into 10 to the power of minus 80 ESU centimeter. But 1, 10, 1 into 10 to the power of minus 80 ESU centimeter is what is what I mean? 1 meter, what is equal to the 4.8 in terms of okay? Next. <clears throat> if HCl molecule is what I asked, completely ionized. HCl molecule is what I asked, completely polarized, what I asked here. So the expected value of dipole moment is going to be the 6.12 in terms of D. D means delay. But the experimental value of the same dipole moment is going to be 1.03 in terms of delay. 
the whole character, the percentage of which character we are is the identity character we have find. Okay. So here the percentage of which character I only have. Previously I mentioned that in the form of mu divided by the charge into the interatomic distance. There is another formula, it is the mu of experimental divided by mu of theoretical. Theoretical we can expect that in the form of expected. As you find that in the form of percentage, it is going to be a lot. Just it is the ratio of the experimental dipole moment divided by the observed or is also called as the theoretical or the expected dipole moment into 100. What is the experimental here? Experimental value of dipole moment is going to be 1.03, then we divide it by the theoretical is going to be the what's that? The expected or the theoretical is going to be 6.12 into 10 and that's nearly you will say that it is 1 by 6 into 100. 1 by 6 into 100 is nearly equal to 100 by 6. 100 by 6 means it is 17, I think. It is nearly 17. So 16 point something in here, or it is exactly equal to 100 percent. Thus, 17 percent is which character, ionic character, if I know the which and which dipole moments, both the experimental dipole moment as well as the theory. Theory is also called as the expected dipole. Okay? Next. <coughs> Which of the following liquids is not deflected by a non-uniform electrostatic field? Water, chloroform, nitrobenzene, and then the hexane. So why, when the molecules get deflected, or any liquids can be deflected, if they are going to be the polarity, means the polar molecules gets deflected but the non-polar molecules gets undeflected that we have no first if it is having a polarity means we are having the two therefore if I put the uniform electrostatic field in that way they will start to get deflected suppose if the molecule is going to be the non-polar what happens even by putting the charge in that what happens that doesn't have the deflection now we have to find this one form of this H2 chloroform. Chloroform. Nitrobenzene. Nitrobenzene. And finally, the hexane. Hexane is CH2. CH2 is the CH2 product. Delta minus delta minus delta minus delta plus delta minus. Here this delta minus delta minus delta plus. Here this delta zero and then delta c. So here I think these three are polar moments. That is why they get different. As it is an example of why what? Non-polar, we can say that it starts to get undeflected. Means we can't expect any deflection in the molecule is going to be what in nature? Down polar molecule among that is going to be the X. Okay. Next. Which of the following possesses the highest melting point? When we can expect the molecule is going to be the highest melting point. So here we are having chlorobenzene. Orthodichlorobenzene, beta dichlorobenzene, and then paradichlorobenzene. This is chlorobenzene, orthodichlorobenzene, meta dichlorobenzene, and finally the which is having the more symmetrical structure. The more symmetrical structure is paradichlorobenzene. More the symmetric nature, more is the close packing of it arrangement, more is the breaking of that particular part. Therefore, it is.
than the mod root power. Right. Means we can decide that the parallel dipole of benzene is having the what point? Highest melting point among the various compounds that is called as chlorobenzene, ortho dipole of benzene, meta dipole of benzene, or the parallel dipole of benzene. As the parallel dipole of benzene is having the more what structure? Symmetrical structure. Due to the symmetrical structure, the molecules are closely packed. If the molecules are closely packed, means we can expect the more is it formed. Which of the following has the highest polarizing power? <coughs> Low charge on ions favors the which bonding? I will be Whereas the higher charge on the given ions has the more which bonding correct. More the correct bonding means higher the charge, more is the polar nature. Lesser the charge, lesser is the non-polar nature. So more is the non-polar nature. What we need here is having the highest polarizing power. Somebody in the question should be mentioned. Fajal should tell us are explains higher the charge on the cation increases the pp of anion means the polarizing power of that particular means where we can expect here which is having the highest charge on the cation here it is plus two plus three plus one and plus two okay here it is means it is according to the application of which one here which is the polarizing power of the given ion always increases with Increase in the charge of the cation of the even decrease in the charge of the which one. Okay. Amongst the which one? Lithium chloride, rhodium chloride, barium chloride, and then magnesium chloride, the compounds with the greatest and the least ionic character are respectively what? Respectively, what I'm saying. Lithium chloride, barium chloride, rubidium chloride, and then magnesium chloride. We have discussed. More the difference in electronegativity, higher is the ionic character, lesser the difference in electronegativity, lesser is the ionic character. As the chloride is common in every case, it is fixed. What are the various ions here? Lithium, rubidium, beryllium, and then magnesium. So, which is more electropositive here? So, these two are first more electropositive compared to this. This is alkali metals and this is alkali earth metals. Means, this is what the electropositive metals. Among these two, the electropositivity goes on increasing from top to bottom. Therefore, this is the most electropositive. Most what positive? Electropositive. These are less electropositive compared to the top of the Then, down in whatever the electropositive character, it goes on increasing. Therefore, this is having the less electropositive character. As which is fixed. Electronegativity is fixed. That is, chloride is always negative. Here, the difference in electronegativity is maximum because more electropositive the electronegative element, the difference is going to be the maximum. Therefore, it is having the highest mixed character. Whereas, compared between these two, what is that? Beryllium and then the chlorine. So, here what we can expect